Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to uh, solve this packet tracer activity. Modify single area OSPF V2. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA version 7 online classes or any other project support, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get these type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. And also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now, coming back to this uh, packet tracer activity. Here we can see our addressing table. Okay, and we will uh, go through the objectives. In part 1, modify OSPF default settings. In part 2, verify connectivity. Scenario In this activity, OSPF is already configured and all entity devices currently have full connectivity. We will modify the default OSPF routing configurations by changing the hello and dead timers and adjusting the bandwidth of a link. Then we will verify that full connectivity is restored for all entity devices. We will go one by one. Uh, part 1 Modify OSPF default settings. Step 1. Test connectivity between all entity devices. Before modifying the OSPF settings, verify that all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Okay, we will uh, test the connectivity. Uh, we will uh, take our addressing table. Uh, we will get the IP address of PC2 and uh, we will ping from PC1. We'll go to command prompt and here we will give the ping command and then the IP address of PC2. We may get one or two requests timed out and then we will get the replies. Yeah. Then we will get the IP address of PC3. Ping PC3. Okay, then we will get the IP address of this web server. Here we can see our web server. We will ping from PC1 to this web server. We may get one request timed out. Yep, it's working. Step 2. Adjust the hello and dead timers between R1 and R2. Uh, enter the following commands on R1. Uh, we have to go to interface serial 000. Then we will uh, change this um, hello interval and dead, dead interval. IP OSPF hello interval 15. Then IP OSPF dead interval 60. Coming to our topology, here we can see that interface. Uh, serial 0, 0, 0, which is connecting to uh, this router R2. So we will go to R1 and we will uh, give this command enable conf t then we will go to that interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we will uh, set IP OSPF hello interval 15 Okay. Also, we will uh, set IP OSPF dead interval 60. After a short period of time, the OSPF connection with R2 will fail as shown in the uh, router output. So, we get this message neighbor down dead timer expired. Okay, we will see that here. Yes, here we get that message. How we can rectify this? Both sides of the connection need to have the same timer values in order for the adjacency to be maintained. Identify the interface on R2 that is connected to R1. Then adjust the timers on the R2 interface to match the settings on R1. Yes, we have to configure the same hello interval and uh, 
this is a dead interval uh, on the other side of the link we will verify that interface it's uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 we will go to that router and uh, configure it and here also we can see we get that message enable conf t we will go to interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we will set that ip or spf hello interval 15 also we will set ip or spf dead interval 60 after a brief period of time you should see a status message that indicates that the OSPF adjacency has been re-established so we have to get this message loading done yeah here we get that loading done even we can verify in R1 and here we can see neighbor and uh, loading to full loading done now we will go to step 3 adjust the bandwidth settings on r1 trace the path between pc1 and the web server located at 64.100.1.2 notice that the path from pc1 to this uh, uh, server uh, is routed through r2 ospf prefers the lower cost path yes that is correct so we will give this uh, trace it command we will go to pc1 uh, command prompt will a tracer to this server and we can see it goes to default gateway then we can see it goes to 172.16.3.2 we will identify the IP address here we can see the first IP address 172.16.1.1 uh, this is the um, default gateway of this PC1 that is the IP address of this uh, interface G0 slash 0 in this router R1. We can verify that. Uh, I will give exit or we can give end. Show IP interface brief. And uh, we will see the IP address here G0 slash 0. Here we can see 172.16.1.1. Yes, it's correct. The next is 172.16.3.2. We will go to R2 and we will verify it and show IP interface brief. And here we can see that IP address 172.16.3.2, the IP address of this interface serial 0, 0, 0 in this router R2. Okay, then we can see it goes to this uh, 209.165.200.226. So maybe that will be in, inside this internet. And here they specified that uh, uh, network address. Let me verify it 209.165.200.226. Yeah, maybe they given uh, 225 here and the other side they given 226 that's fine and finally it reaches to this server we will see this in a simulation mode so that it will be more clear so just i will click on simulator simulation and here we can see show all or none just we will click edit filters we will go give only this icmp then close this also i will close this then i will maximize and uh, delete this okay now uh, i will send a packet add a simple pdu from pc1 uh, to this web server uh, so that we can uh, view this uh, packet path we'll uh, click capture and forward it goes to s1 then it goes to r1 then we can see it goes to r2 then uh, to this internet then it goes to web server 
we identified uh, the route from PC1 to this web server. On the R1 serial 000 interface set the bandwidth to 64 uh, KB per seconds. This does not change the actual uh, port speed, only the metric that the OSP of process on R1 will use to calculate best routes. So we are going to change the bandwidth of the interface serial uh, 000 in this router R1. We will go to R1 and we will uh, change the bandwidth. Conf T. We will go to that interface that is serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we will uh, set that bandwidth 64. Trace the path between PC1 and the web server located at uh, 64.100.1.2. Notice that the path from PC1 to this uh, web server is redirected through R3. OSPF prefers the lower cost path. Okay, we will uh, check that. We have to give this uh, trace set command again in this uh, PC1. We will go to PC1 command prompt and uh, Press up arrow from keyboard so that we will get the previous command we given and uh, we can see the details. Here we can see the default gateway of this uh, PC1. Uh, then we can see this IP address, the IP address of this uh, router R3, then the IP address of uh, R2, then it goes to the internet, then to uh, the server. We can see this in simulation. So it will be more clear. Uh, let me click on a simulation. And here we uh, selected only ICMP. We will choose this add symbol PDU, then send from PC1 to this web server. And we will click on capture, then forward. It goes to S1, then it goes to R1. And here we can see it goes to R3, then R2. Then to the internet, and finally to the web server. Okay. Finally, verify connectivity. Verify that all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Okay, we will ping from PC1 to PC2, PC1 to PC3, uh, and PC1 to web server. Okay. We'll go to command prompt. Uh, I will press up arrow from keyboard so that we can ping 172.16.2.2. So uh, we are pinging to our PC2, then we will uh, ping to our uh, PC3, 192.168.1.2, that's correct. Then we will ping to this web server, it's here, yeah, it's working. Okay, uh, that's all in this activity. Modify single area OSPF v2. Here we can see our completion status. It's 100%. Now, dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions regarding this packet tracer activity, uh, please comment below or you can uh, uh, contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And if you like our video, give a thumb and share with all your friends. Stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.